Hi, this is David Valade with AltaVista Technology, and today I was going to show something inside of Sage Intact called a smart event. So Sage Intact does a lot of nice features um, as far as preventing things from happening or uh, making fields required or doing um, different sorts of um, rules to either encourage or, or discourage certain things from happening within the system. So that's a whole bit of functionality called a smart rule, but there's also these other things I'm going to talk about today called a smart event. So a smart event is a little bit of code that sits on the system and it waits for something to happen. And when that something happens, then it springs into action and does something that I tell it to do. So I had a scenario, a hypothetical in mind. I thought we could try to do this. So let's suppose that, uh, let's say I am in Michigan and I am having a lot of sales in, in Michigan. Business is booming. I'm selling like crazy. I'm booking invoices all the time in Michigan, but I'm trying really hard to expand and go out of state. And I really would like to know anytime we have a sale out of state so that I could celebrate and, um, and give an attaboy or encourage my team. I can do that luckily with a smart event. So I can go in here under my dashboard, you can see that. And there's this little section called platform services. This is a fancy little area. Um, this used to be in the old days of software where you would hire a developer and do some really hard programming. Of course, we still have development opportunities with Intact. There's ways to extend the system, but there's a lot of great things within the system that we can use that are not full-on development tools that will still get what we want. So anyway, I go to platform services and I can see there's something called smart rules and the thing called a smart event. So I want to make a smart event. That means I want, to, I want you to do something after something happens. That's an event. So I'm going to hit the little plus here. And uh, I have a few steps here. Not so bad. Uh, the first thing walks me through it really, really well. I'll make this a little bigger maybe so we can see it. Uh, what's the object that I want to put my event on? Well, in my scenario, I said, I want you to tell me when I have an invoice that's out of state or a sale that's out of state. So I'll pick an invoice. Sounds like a good one here. And then I say next. And this is a uh, powerful tool here. There's a little bit of programming. So I'm going to do a little bit, well, not really programming, but a little bit of a formula building, if nothing else. So here I am on a smart event, and I do have to say what kind of action I want. There's only four choices here, but there's a lot behind these four. So the first one is an email, of course. We know what that is. HTTP post. That means I want the system, which is cloud-based, of course, to reach out and push information into another cloud-based thing. That's not what I want to do in this example, but if you use your imagination there, you see I can connect Intact to other tools. Uh, log is just to uh, keep track of things I'm doing within the system. And API is really fancy. I can actually have Intact update Intact and do a lot of things within the system. Well, my example was just to tell me, so an email sounds great. And when do I want the system to tell me something? I was on an invoice on the last step, so I'm gonna say anytime I add an invoice. Set means update, delete is just like you might think, but uh, adding is great for me. So I want to say this little uh, event should happen anytime I add an invoice. Okay, moving on, I got to pick a condition here. If I don't pick any condition, that means anytime I make any kind of invoice, I'm going to be emailed. Hmm. That sounds fun, but uh, probably a little overkill. So again, restating my, my uh, hypothetical here, I wanted to be told anytime an invoice happens out of Michigan. Well, I don't, I want to pick some fields here and I don't know what to choose, but luckily there's this little button up here called a field lookup. So I'm going to click that and a new window opens and I see the invoice itself, a lot of fields on the invoice, and then beneath it, all sorts of things that are connected to the invoice. They're all connected for me. I don't have to go trying to uh, merge or join tables or anything like that. This is all done for me. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go to the bill to contact. That's the address there. Well, the contact name associated with the invoice and there's a mailing address. And there we go. There's the field I want, state or province. Okay. So if I check the box there, that's what I want. And then I can um, just uh, say, okay. And look what it did. It it's intact put in a crazy looking bit of text here, but I can read that and it's basically saying the state that's on the build to mailing address. <laughs> okay, that's about what I want. And I want to be told again whenever it's not Michigan. So this is a little formula here. We have a lot of resources on our website and there's the help and support within Intact, of course, that uh, can give you some good information on this. I happen to know from having done this a few times that... Um, I can say that little thing, uh, bang equals, uh, that means unequal to, and I can put in Michigan. 
There we go. I also want to do a little or here. Okay, so I don't know if I have Intex set up to let me type just anything. Maybe I want, um, maybe I put in states that are MI. Maybe I typed like the two letter uh, postal abbreviation and sometimes I put Michigan. I'm going to put and, and I'm just going to copy this first bit and paste that again and just make it MI. Okay, and let's read what I just put here. That's the whole thing. That looks intimidating, I sure. But let's read it. I just basically said if the state's not equal to Michigan and the state's not equal to MI, then I want this event to fire. Well, it looks like a lot, but after you've done this a few times, it starts to look second nature. And that little field lookup really did the hard part for me. So if you think about it, the only thing I had to know really was this little unequal to formula and this little and thing. That's not so bad. There's only like three or four of those, and I can look them up in the help if I need need a hand with that. So that's not too bad. All right, moving on. I say next, and then I get to uh, write an email to me. So I would put in my email address. I'll add that in a minute. Uh, subject, we can say a new uh, out-of-state invoice. Great. And then I put in my body. So this is the body of the message I would get. So let's just say invoice. Oops, we can type. And I want to put the invoice number here. So guess what I'm going to do? Back into my field lookup. There we go. And I see invoice number. I pick it. I say OK. <laughs> nice and easy. So invoice. And there's my value. And if it's not obvious, what's going to happen here is when this email fires, it's going to actually swap out this little bit of uh, uh, coding looking thing uh, here, like a mail merge field. It's going to take that out and it's going to swap it out for the invoice number of whatever I'm putting in. So I'll say invoice. There it is for a certain dollar amount, maybe. Maybe I want to put the dollar amount in. So I'll go look up again. And again, I'm going to take a field off the invoice. Total amount looks great. Take that one. Okay. So I'll say for that. All right. Uh, was was entered and maybe I'll say the state slash province is okay. And then I'll hit my little field look up here. And this was the hardest one to find. It was the state. Remember that was down here under the build to mailing address. And there it is. Okay. Say so it right on that. Okay, and I think I've done it. I would put in my email address here, and then on my next, I hit next here, and I left that blank. I'll add that before I uh, move on, and then I just have to give it a name. Out of state invoice, <laughs> or something like that. All right, and then I would hit save and continue. Now, I already have one like this saved, so let's, um, let's uh, go ahead and try it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this tab. I'm going to come in and I'm going to go into my accounts receivable. I'm going to add an invoice. And here I am. Okay. Ready to enter an invoice. I'm all set to go. I hit the drop down. I'll just pick the first customer on the list here. And that's a good one. It looks like it's uh, in California, San Jose, California. Intact is a nice little feature where I can populate from the last invoice. So that sounds like a fun little feature. I'll click that button. And a nice invoice comes in. I am all set to go. So now I just have to go ahead and post. And there we have it. So I now have a new invoice that I just booked. So I'm going to uh, switch over to my email and see what I got. Okay. And here I have an email here. It says, look, an out-of-state invoice. Invoice invoice ending 503 was booked for $500. And the state is California, sure enough. So it did it. So my, my smart rule did exactly what I told it to do. Now, this is a kind of a simple example, but if you think about all the ways, big and small, that your accounting software can either enforce rules or notify you of things that happen that you need to be told about, those little things add up. And it helps you keep nimble. It helps you uh, get the most out of your software, out of your workforce. It also helps you take advantage of the opportunities that are out in front of you. So I hope this example just gives you a little idea of what you can do within Sage Intact. Hopefully you can use smart events in your organization to better leverage your software. Thanks again.